was a, a kid when I was in high school. Um, you know, I was growing up through the ranks when Kobe came into the league. He was, um, you know, it wasn't a dream of mine to come straight, you know, from high school at that point in time to the NBA. But I was like, wow, a 17 year old, 18 year old kid being able to, to make that leap. That's that's pretty damn cool. Um, and and as I started playing more ball and I went into high school, the things that he was doing on the floor, I you know, admired and wanted to be a part of. Um, I went to ABCD camp. And he came and talked to all the all the all the kids that was there, and I happened to be one of the one of the kids that was there, and I was just I was just listening. I was just trying to soak everything up I could, you know. And I remember one thing that he said. He was like, "If you want to try to be, you know, great at it, or want to be one of the greats, you got to put the work in. You know, there's no substitution to work." And and I was a 15 year old kid at that camp. You can actually find the footage of him uh, him at that camp. Um, and in 2001, I believe um, I was playing in, in New Jersey, and the All Star game, if I'm not mistaken, and y'all can correct me, was in Philly, right? Yeah. That Saturday, uh, me and Maverick drove to the Intercontinental downtown Philadelphia, um, and he gave me a pair of his shoes, which I ended up wearing um, that following night. It was the red, white, and blue Kobe's. I was a 15, and he was a 14, and I wore them anyways. Um, and I sat and just talked to him for a little bit. He gave me the shoes. I rocked them in the game. Um, and it was the same night that we played uh, Oak Hill against Melo. And then I saw what he was able to do the very next night, winning MVP here um, in Philly. That 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 same uh, that following night. Um, as I got drafted, I still just admired him. You know, seeing what he was able to accomplish, winning championships, having you know, being early in his career where you know he he learned from the misses that he had against the series against Utah, and he just used that as motivation and got better and better and better to him winning multiple championships, and uh, continued to admire him throughout my high school rank, and um, and then as competitors, um, just seeing the work ethic, um, the work ethic that he put into the game. He had zero flaws offensively, zero. Uh, you backed off of him, he could shoot the three. You pick, you know, you body him up a little bit. He can go around you. He can shoot the mid range. He can post. He can make free throws. He had zero flaws offensively, and um, you know that's something that I admired as well. Just being a, at a point where the defense will always be at bay, where they couldn't guard you at all offensively, where you just felt like you was just immortal offensively because of your skill set and your work ethic. Uh, we take it down to 2008 where we become the redeem, the redeem team. And it was a dream come true for me to be able to line up along, alongside of him. Um, just admiring him for so many years and him seeing him from afar and then being able to be in practices with him and, and you know, me watching and learning. Um, so, on. I mean, it's just, it's just too much. It's just too much. The story is just too much. It doesn't make sense. Um, and just to make a long story short, now I'm here in the Lakers uniform in Philadelphia, where he's from, where I one of the first first time I ever met him, gave me his shoes, he won All-Star Week. It's just, it's surreal. It doesn't make no sense, but the, the universe uh, just puts things in, in your life. And, and, and when you, I guess when you live in the right way or you just giving everything to whatever you're doing, um, things happen organically and it's not supposed to make sense, but it just happens. And uh, sorry, and uh, I'm happy to just to be in a, any conversation with Kobe Bean Bryant, one of the all time greatest basketball players to ever play, one of the all time greatest Lakers. The man got two jerseys hanging up in Staples Center. It's just, it's just crazy. And the irony for you as a pass first player, you said basically your whole life to not be third scoring on the time Um, Yeah, because I, I, I don't, um, I just don't, I, I've never seen myself as a scorer. Um, I've seen myself as just a, a, a guy that's just a basketball player, and, and, I, and I've always wanted to have the, that, that triple threat mentality of being able to pass, being able to rebound, being able to score at times. And, um, you know, I've always loved this, the, I've always loved the excitement that I gave my teammates by giving them the ball and seeing them score since I first ever started playing a game of basketball. That's always been like the greatest thing on the floor for me. And also being able to get back and, and make, uh, you know, like change in plays defensively. Um, so to be in this position as far as a scoring record or, or scoring list, um, that also doesn't make sense to me. LeBron, you, you never played against Michael, so you could 
always chases ghosts or call him an idol. You played against Kobe for so long. Was there a point where you have to stop idolizing him so you can play, play against him and compete and win and all those kinds of things? No. No, but you also can keep the main thing the main thing. Um, once the game started, when we competed against each other, um, probably after the first time I played him, my rookie year, you, you, you keep the main thing the main thing, and you're trying to go out and win the game, and he's trying to destroy you because that's what Kobe's all about. Um, he has zero friends out on the floor, but that doesn't mean that I'm still not admiring the guy that I'm playing against. Um, I'm able to still prioritize and understand what's, uh, what's going on on the floor. So, um, and I think I showed that when we, when we competed against each other. And then not, uh, not getting a chance to play against him in the finals. Is, uh, at one time you said that was one of your very few regrets uh, in your basketball career. Does that still, still stand? I won't say it's a regret um, because it is what it is. The game has given me everything and I've given the game everything as well. Um, but uh, we had an opportunity. Um, I think that was 2009 or eight. The year we lost to Orlando in Eastern Conference Finals. And uh, we had a hell of a year that year. I think we were 66 and 16, and we got all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, but we ran up against a, a Dwight Howard in his prime. And uh, he completely, uh, he crushed us, and along with Hito and, and Rashard Lewis and the rest of those guys. But um, no, it's not a regret. Um, I think it would have been amazing to be able to compete against Kobe in the finals. It would have been great for the fans, but it's no, no regret. We had enough battles. Uh, huh? Envision it that you would pass? No, I didn't. I, it didn't matter. It could have been a layup. It could have been a free throw. It could have been a dunk. It could have been a three. It could have been a tip in. It doesn't matter. Because um, I, I, for me, I don't. I didn't go into the game saying, "Okay, this is how I'm going to do it." If it would have, if it happened tonight like it did, cool. If it didn't, I wasn't. I really wasn't tripping about it. What's it been like adjusting to having Kobe as a spectator at your games and sort of cheering you on uh, as you were chasing this record? Um. It's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, that's pretty much how I'm going to be when I'm done playing. Um, being able to come back and watch this beautiful game. And hopefully, you know, there's some, you know, somebody still playing the game at a high level. That guy across the hallway, Ben Simmons, I can sit and watch him and see how much he's continued to grow and watch him see him continue to do what he do because uh, he's growing every day. So, I mean, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to see him and, and you know, and see Gigi at the games and, and just, uh, you know, just it's, it's a brotherhood, you know, it's a brotherhood being a part of the, the, the Lakers franchise and we all root for one another no matter past, present, or future. That's, that's what it's about. Last two questions. Uh, I, I'm, I'm getting to every, I've, as you see, I had to answer a phone call while y'all was in here, so I haven't got to all my messages yet. Last question. Well, is there a favorite memory? I mean, is it him giving you the sneakers? Is it winning gold medals? Is it, was there something on the court that you guys did against one another that just stands out when you think about him? Um, as far as uh, together? Yeah. Just something, a Kobe memory. It's just it's too many. It's too many. It could be uh, the last game we played against each other in Staples. It could be his last All-Star game. Um, you know, right there at halftime, he was getting interviewed by the great Craig Sager, rest in peace. Um, that that is a, a unbelievable moment right there, and and I went over there and hijacked his interview, you know. So um, us winning a gold medal together, um, some of the things that us going to some of the other events uh, for Team USA, uh, you know, watching Phelps or um, you know, so so many different things that we did together as as teammates. So you know, when I like I said, I was a 15 year old. Hey, hey, doll. This is Nome Pereira. Thanks for watching my YouTube video channel. Don't forget to uh, subscribe and click the bell button para more update tayo sa sunod po na video.